It is now very obvious and clear to me that whatever questions we ask of the universe arise because of the architecture of our brain. More precisely, philosophy is the result of differing brain states, and upon that contingent scaffolding, we come up with varying questions to ask of the world and its participants. Though we never seem to realize that such questioning has less to do with reality per se, and more to do with our own evolutionary needs. Every deep question we have, every deep thought we ponder, is the result of the confusion of a neural system when confronted with its own disassociation. Consciousness is disassociation. So consciousness arises as disassociation, so it can play out via its internal machinations, what we call imagination daydreaming without physical harm, alternative scenarios to secure its four F's. Fuck, food, flee, fight. And therein lies its Darwinian advantage. Since most of our awareness is in our head, it doesn't have to face the very real and empirical and deathly consequences of being without. Being within survives. Being without tends to end up dead. Consciousness is literally a virtual simulator, and that is why it has been so helpful in allowing humans to survive globally, even when our bodies were not adapted to certain environmental niches. Those without consciousness don't have this liberty, and thus when they do play out a choice, they do so in a real world. And in such a real world, if it doesn't work, you are eaten. In imagination, in consciousness, you can play as if it is real and project all sorts of in-game earnings to see which one would be to your advantage. Ah, I can put it better yet. Philosophy is like heartburn. It is the natural result of something that didn't digest well. I will call it brain burn.